In this video, we're going to explore the first person movement system from the game modules, including how to move, how to jump, and how to fly around. Let's get right into it. First person movement is not a game module, it's a system. What's the difference between a system and a module? Well, the modules are things like the stats, item objects, etc. Things that create a scriptable object, an object that you can you know, manipulate and move around. Systems are more bespoke in-game mechanics. So we have the inventory system. That's a drag and drop inventory system. If you don't want a drag and drop inventory system in your project, then just don't use it. You're not forced to use it by any means. And the first person movement is also a system, something that you can use if you'd like. You can customize if you'd like, but you don't have to use it. You'll find the first person movement folder under the game modules. In the prefabs, you're going to find the game modules first person camera prefab, which I have in the scene right here, and also the first person movement demo. Now this is a scriptable object that controls the basic details of your movement. Now you can create a new one by right clicking, create game modules, create first person movement, and name it appropriately and then you can modify the values right there you can turn these off to disable those aspects so in other words if you turn off the tilt then that means the player cannot tilt up and down if you turn off the pan they can't pan left and right if you turn off movement speed they won't be able to move jump and flight etc so let's have a look at this prefab here we have a few things the first is the player input now this is a very basic player input I've added a note up here in the class to remind you that this is a very basic player input. Now, you can of course inherit from this if you'd like to modify things just slightly or create your own player input system. The goal of the player input is to pass data into the first person movement control. So in this script, we have our keys and we are just handling the buttons and handling the movement and passing that data into the first player movement control. First player movement control has a bunch of required objects here at the top. And then these are the things that will be passed in. Your input script or the player input script that we just looked at will pass this data in. And then here's some additional control options. Now, if any of these are false on the scriptable object, on the first person movement scriptable object, then they'll be set false at start. However, you can manually turn these on and that could enable some additional game mechanics for your project. The first person movement control is also something you could create your own version of. You can inherit from this and add additional features, additional parameters, or override some of the methods already on this class. Finally, we have the first person movement Blackboard communication script. This will post to the Blackboard anything that you have listed here. It will also notify followers if these options are set here as well. The Blackboard note topic will be first person movement or whatever you set in this field. And the Blackboard note subject will be height, distance to ground, movement speed, exactly as you see here. The variable names as they show up in the inspector is the subject for these strings in case you wanna set up your followers to look for those strings. Just like the other scripts, you can inherit your own class from this and modify it or add to it as you'd like and override the methods you'd like to modify. All right, let's uh, see it in action. You can see some of the values being passed in here on the pass these values in from your script so you can get a sort of visual of what's going on. And if we look at our player input, we see that our jump key is set to space. So we can jump there. And if we look at, and if we look at our first person movement object here, we can see that on jump, we have the short jump if button is released. So that means if I release the button, we do a short jump. If we hold it, we do a higher jump. If we turn that off, then we just do the high jump no matter how uh, long I hold the button for. With change direction and air, when I jump, I can't move forward, but with that turned on, we can jump. We can jump and move forward at the same time, or we can jump and change direction at the same time. And then if we have jump repeatedly, that means as long as I hold down the space bar, we'll jump over and over. If I turn that off, then it will only jump once. The jump force is the height of the jump. I can change to something quite high and go even higher. So the movement speed is currently set to two and we are set to default run. If I hold down shift, which is my run key, then we go down to the walk speed. So run speed is four, walk speed is two. 
our durate, we do have a transition of the speed, which is transitions over 0.3 seconds. With that off, whenever I press the button, the speed change is instant. Pan speed is currently set to 360. You can increase that or decrease that, and tilt speed is the same. The max and min tilt control how far up and down you can look. If you go too far, then you get the gimbal lock, so you want to be careful, and we clamp that value for you as well. And finally, we have the flight. So our flight buttons are currently set E to go up and Q to go down. And there is this minimum height of one. This means that once we get to that point, we will stop flying. So if I don't fly above that point or I get just down to it, we will fall down to the earth. We can set this to higher as well to get a more, you can see it right here. Now we'll fly down to five and then we drop down. The vertical speed is the speed for up and down motion. So if we increase this to something much higher, you'll see that we fly up and down much faster as well. And the flight speed mod is a modification on the movement speed. So as we move forward, we're moving this fast. If we suddenly start flying, we'll go a little bit faster, one point times fast, as fast. Again, even when we're in the air, we can hold down shift to move slower. We'll use the walk speed or if the uh, default run is off, then we will start out slow and shift will make us move faster. The last option in the flight is move to look direction. When that is on, you will move up and down. If you're looking up and down with this off, you will not move up and down. You can only move up and down with the up and down keys. You can move forward while moving up or moving down, but the keys are the only thing that will move you up and down so you can look down no problem. However, in the player input, there are these lock buttons. So we have a lock pan and tilt currently set to left control. If I hold that, then the mouse look stops moving. And then the lock flying look at move is Z. So if I have, but if I hit Z, then we will stop moving up and down when we are looking in that direction. So you can enable additional mechanics or options for your players uh, or just set it to something hard-coded for your game depending on your project so there's a lot you can do there and of course you can always override everything and customize these to make your own version or use another input system entirely you don't have to use this this is provided for you if you'd like to use it but of course if you'd like to use your own then definitely use your own system all right there you go come to the discord if you have any questions and have a great day Bye bye